like have you ever encountered anybody do you believe there's anybody out there that doesn't play power games manipulation have shadows have darkness in them no i don't but um so in my war book uh, i i read the biography of mahatma gandhi one of the saintliest figures in history right and i realized that mahatma gandhi was actually a brilliant strategist now i'm not saying his use of nonviolence and civil disobedience didn't come from the heart. He didn't mean it. He wasn't actually, he didn't actually believe in the peaceful method. He did. He was very sincere, but he was very strategic about it. And he planned a campaign, several campaigns like the Salt March in the 20s, where he knew, for instance, that the English public was very liberal minded. They had this ideal of themselves as being this very, they weren't colonialists, they weren't imperialists, they were doing the best for the world. And he deliberately had these marches where he knew that, that they, on, in, they would be reading in their newspaper and seeing photographs of Indian people being beaten up by Englishmen and, and their Indian officers on the streets of wherever. It would have a terrible impact on the public. He thought in terms of strategy. Okay, so there's Gandhi. Then there's Martin Luther King, who's somebody I wrote about a lot in The Laws of Human Nature, another great icon whom I admire, who actually was inspired by Gandhi and had campaigns of civil disobedience. And there was a campaign, I believe it was in Montgomery or Selma, I can't which, remember which one, where um, he was getting fed up. They weren't getting very far in the civil rights movement. They were reaching a stalemate, and he was getting very frustrated. And... Um, Somebody, an advisor came to him and said, look, we're going to have this massive march and, and I, I can get a lot of elementary school and junior high school students to be on this march because they believe in you and they're very fervent. And I think it would be great. And his advisors go, God, you can't do that. You can't have put 13-year-olds at risk. And Martin Luther King thought about it very deeply. He said, no, we're going to go ahead and do it. Because, damn it, I want the American public sitting in there all fat and watching their televisions to see these brutal, you know, Bull Connor, the, the police chief then. I want to see these children being water hosed and beaten, and it's going to have an incredible impact. He was being strategic, and his advisors were shocked by it, but it ended up proving to be one of the most pivotal, important moments in the civil rights movement. So here you have Gandhi and Martin Luther King. I'm never, and Martin Luther King was a flawed individual, as we know right? He had a private life that wasn't exactly in the, the same as his public life. I don't judge him for that because he was a brilliant man and, and I admire him. I love him deeply. Reading his biography made me even admire him even more, seeing that he had a human flawed side to him. But these are icons that we set up and they reveal what I'm talking about in human nature. You can't escape it. Yeah, maybe there was some saint born in some century that I've never heard of that maybe got pretty far away from everything I've talked about. But, you know, you know, we all have this idea, like in the laws of human nature, I write about irrationality, envy, aggression, we go, go, or narcissism. Narcissism is a good one. Oh, they're a narcissist. I'm not a narcissist. I'm not self-absorbed, but they are. Yeah, yeah. I don't have any of those traits. Well, damn it. Every single human being has self-absorption traits. We can't help it. We naturally think of ourselves first. Yes, there are people who are much deeper narcissists in life, no doubt, and there are toxic narcissists, but we all have a touch of it. I want you to be a little more humble in this world and not be so arrogant and not think that you are somehow exempt from having a dark side, that somehow you were born with a halo over your head that you were born different, you don't have human nature, that you're a saintly person, you're much better. Get rid of your moral superiority because I find that deeply offensive. We are all cut from the same cloth. We all have the same flaws. And when you look at yourself, and when I wrote The Laws of Human Nature, I'm going, damn it, Robert, you're, you have a dark side. You're a narcissist. You know, I had to come to terms with my irrationality, my grandiosity, my aggressive instincts. But it's the only way to change yourself is to be aware that you have these issues. I have the narcissistic tendencies. Now I see it. All right. Now when they pop up, pop up, I can control it better. I can say, 
damn, Robert, you're being too self-absorbed to think more about the other person. But if you go around in life thinking, I don't have any of these problems, I'm not a narcissist, you're never going to have the awareness to stop the fact that you are actually one. 